All right. How's everybody doing out there? Uh, Paul Stetsowitz with the Mechanics Corner, and you are tuned to channel 108. Everything BF 108, and we're going to give you a quick little update on the project. Uh, we haven't done anything major to it, but we're going to we found out a few things about the airplane uh, that we're going to talk about. Uh, before I get started, though, I'm going to give a shout out to everybody out there who's watched the videos. We've got a lot of good response back. A lot of people watch the videos. It's it's cool to see everybody excited as we are excited about the project, and we had some good uh, good feedback. I actually talked to a few people that had parts that's going to help us out, which is great. And we actually were in contact with Otto Weiss's grandson, who's still alive in Orsono, Chile, which is pretty pretty amazing. So that was really neat. Uh, one of the coolest comments I got was we were talking about the originality of the airplane and how I wish we could keep it this way. Somebody had a great idea, though, we can't do this. They said clear coat the whole thing and leave it the way it is and turn it into a rat rod, which is a really great idea. I love rat rods too, but unfortunately we can't do that with an airplane that is going to fly. But I appreciate the comments and all the good information that we got. We're going to talk about uh, a couple things that we kind of discovered. One is that the engine, we looked at the engine here and we have the original logbook uh, from Otto Wise. Uh, this is when he got the airplane and it's dated 1942 is when he uh, got the airplane. And inside of it, it had the original serial number of the engine. Well, surprisingly enough, there's a number right there, 444-7428. Well, guess what? This is the original engine on the airplane for when it was manufactured, which is extremely rare. You don't see that because these airplanes, especially when they get to be 70, 80 years old, they get very, very uh, engine changes off and on. And so to see the original engine on the airplane is, is extremely rare. So that's exciting. Uh, another thing we did here, we're doing a little test fit of some of the new cowling. Uh, top cowling is kind of sitting on there and just making sure that it fits okay, everything looks pretty good. And on my first video, I mentioned about the side panels coming off. They don't actually come off on the 108. They come off on the fuselage storage. That's where I was confused. But on the 108, um, they just flip up, which is really cool. And has a little, it has a little handle here that pops down and a little hole and here on the exhaust it props it up so a lot of access really great it's actually better than coming off because it's easier to deal with it um, that way so that's a really cool thing that we found out cowling seems to be fitting okay there's a few little minor adjustments we have to make a little trimming here and there but it shouldn't be an issue at all uh, next thing we did is of course we got Dave Martin our great welder who comes in in the mornings and he built us a stand. Now when we're working on all these projects we're working with big heavy components, wings, fuselages and during the process of a restoration you have to move these things around the shop. They have to go outside for cleaning, for sandblasting, plastic media, paint shop, whatever. So we try to make some really nice stands and Dave does a great job with that. So he built us this wonderful little uh, metal stand here. The 108 actually has little uh, jack pads underneath here, little cups that hold it, and they built this beautiful stand that's on four swivel casters. Gets the airplane off the ground. We're able to push the fuselage around anywhere we need it to go. And it gets us also clear so we can pull the landing gear off when we go to do that. Why it was up, we actually tried to retract the landing gear. We talked about that being a manual system, but for some reason it does not want to move. I think it's probably because of the fact that it has you know, 60 years of built up grease in the gearboxes and everything. So I don't want to force anything and break anything. But we will try to get that working before we actually get the gear off so we can make sure that that's functioning okay. And the last thing that we did on the fuselage, I went back here and I kind of cleaned up this area uh, that we had a concern about, which is right here. I kind of cleaned up some of the eighth inch of Bondo paint that was in this area just to kind of see what's going on. It's still an issue of concern. This is probably the biggest thing that concerns me about this project is this particular area. It still looks like I think we may have to actually maybe have to remove this section and do a flush repair. And the only other thing we could do besides that is to replace the entire skin, which again is a huge project and it would be very time consuming and also would take a lot of money uh, and time to do that. Quite on the second. <laughs> So that's that with the fuselage. And the next thing we're gonna talk about is the paint scheme. And we talked about earlier in the video about how this airplane might have been painted originally. We actually figured out what probably the original paint job was or what one of the paint schemes was when it was in uh, Chile. So we're gonna walk over to the wings and we're gonna talk about that. All right, here we are back at the wings to the 108 and on our, some of our past videos that we did, we talked about the fact that the airplane had this mysterious yellow paint. And it's, these are the two biggest spots that we see here where it's yellow, there's a little white uh, ring, and then there's blue. 
There's some more of it there. And there's also some on the CC and the P. Now the CC is, is a chili registration for a civil airplane. And we noticed that the yellow didn't go beyond the CC. And then we looked at the logbook. Again, the logbook gave us a little clue here. And the logbook showed that before Otto Wise owned the airplane, it had two other civil registrations. And the second one was CCPSS. So what, from this what we determined was is that the yellow underneath there, the original CCPSS was in yellow. And all they did was just mask the yellow and paint it over in this color. They left the P the same, but when they got here to the WA, because of course they had to change it, they had to change it to SS. Well, guess what? That's what this is. That's what this curve is right here. This is actually the S on both sides right here. So from that, we determined that the airplane was probably originally blue and it had the yellow lettering. It might have had the same on the fuselage side as well, although I didn't find too much evidence of the yellow paint on there, but we think that is the original paint scheme. Now, are we going to go that route? Probably not. Um, there are a few other 108s flying out there, including the Commander Air Force airplane that is painted the blue. I think there's one in Europe that's painted the blue. Um, Mr. Weeks, not crazy about that color. We talked about it and give me kind of a clue as maybe the way we're going uh, for a paint scheme for this airplane. All right, we're going to talk about maybe the possibilities of how we're going to paint our particular project. Um, again, we have a book here. That's a great book, uh, Official Monogram Painting Guide for German Aircraft. And it talks about the 108 in this book, and it talks about the three colors that were used. Um, they have the 05 cream, a light gray, and a dark blue. Now, a lot of them were the cream. The airplane was cream uh, at one point in its career. And we actually like an interesting paint scheme. Uh, Willie Messerschmitt himself actually had two personal BF 108s. One of them was gray, and the other one was 05 cream. And also it was 05 cream, and it also had black nose, black or blue. We think they're leaning towards the black. Had some gold trim coming off, and of course the red band and a swastika. This was his personal aircraft. It's actually two color photographs uh, flying over uh, Germany or Austria or whoever. And we really like this scheme. Kermit likes this scheme too. It's a striking scheme. It's kind of a, a little tribute to Willie Messerschmitt himself. So we're leaning towards uh, that particular scheme. And, and a lot of people ask, well, why do you need to know how to paint the airplane now? Why is that important? Well, it's, it's not because you can change that anywhere along the way. But for me and anybody working on a restoration, I need a visual of how the airplane is going to look when it's finished because you come in every day and you work on the airplane and, and it's in a, it's all torn apart, it's in a million pieces, it looks, it looks like hell. For me, if I can visualize what the airplane looks like when it's finished, it gives me the ability to kind of work towards that. So I need to be able to look at a picture like this and go, yeah, that's, someday it's going to look just like that. So that helps me out. So we're, we're excited about that scheme. That course, it might change, but we're leaning towards that at this time. Another couple of things we're trying to do is there are some things that we're not going to be able to do in this project. One of them is the upholstery in the airplane. We talked about on the earlier episodes of it having a leather upholstery. Well, we pulled out one of the seats on the 108. The pilot seats and the co-pilot seat are actually these uh, removable pieces here, which are pretty neat. And it's leather and it's uh, upholstered to a wooden frame, which is actually in amazing condition. And it's stuffed with horsehair and feathers, which is pretty neat also. Uh, of course, as they, as they sit, sit here, um, not very nice. This all has to be reupholstered. This is something we're not going to do. This has to go to upholstery shop, something that has a lot of experience doing this kind of thing, so we want this to look right. So we went to the upholstery shop last week, talked to the guy that we deal with, gave us a little book here for some samples of blue. Kermit has, of course, has to look at these. Uh, he, of course, has to look at these samples and decide what he wants to do. Um, but I'm actually leaning towards, this is really wild, one of the colors is very close to the original. It's actually named Wild Blue Yonder, which is fitting for this airplane. I don't know if Kermit's going to go for that. There's actually two 
two or three samples here that would probably work uh, for that. So as soon as we get a decision on that, because of course before the guy starts the upholstery, he has to buy enough material to do the whole thing. We can actually pull all the seats and everything out of their plane, give those to this gentleman. He can actually get those going. This is something that might take six months, it might take a year. So we need to get that kind of in the works now so we can get that finished. And when if they come back early, we're not quite done, we just wrap them all up, put them in storage, and those pieces are ready to go uh, back on the finished airplane. Last thing we're gonna talk about, been on eBay looking for parts. Amazing thing, found some original pieces. Found an original 108 gear retract handle. Still has the uh, little uh, instruction thing on here on landing in German. Um, the one that's in the airplane is probably fine. We're not sure yet, um, but we thought, well, just in case it has some issues, if we need parts or if that part goes bad, we have another one to replace. It's amazing that that still survived. It even has 108. Uh, stenciled on the very bottom of it, so that's pretty cool. And the other thing we noticed is that the airspeed indicator is in Spanish, because of course they're playing in South America. Went online and found a gentleman that had an NOS, German airspeed indicator, in the original box. I think the box is actually cooler than the instrument. It actually has this little, <laughs> little hay in the bottom over there for packing, and it has a little, little cushion there on top, which of course is not original. They didn't have bubble wrap back then. Um, but still has its original label, so that'll go in the airplane and replace um, the one that we have. So, like I said, we're not doing a lot of work on it, uh, just kind of do some research, getting things rolling here, uh, but kind of gives you an idea of some of the preliminary work that we do on these projects.